Stephanie, thank you so much for joining me here in Berlin. It's always fascinating to hear your unique insights. And you talked about us being in a poly crisis at the moment. So describe what you mean by that and what impact it's having on this industry. I know, well, we've, uh, I think that was one of the words of, of 2022, the sort of new additions to the dictionary, and certainly wasn't something that we were talking about a few years ago. I think it means different things to different people. I mean, I think for some, it's just a lot of things going on at the same time that we find challenging. Um, the way I think about it is the world becoming more expensive in pretty much all the way that counts. Obviously, we're dealing with higher inflation, but it goes beyond that. There was an environment of um, easy money, cheap money, also kind of easy geopolitical conditions, you know, a sort of tailwind for investors who wanted to go abroad, who wanted to bring the global economy closer together. We had that in the sort of high, the, this great period of growth of globalization for 20, 30 years. Um, and we also had a flood of, of cheaper goods and low transportation costs coming from low energy costs. You know, all of that feels like it's gone into reverse over the last few years. And you know, the most obvious thing is the battle against inflation that central banks are waging, which has in itself raised the cost of money for all the people here at Super Return. Um, but there is also this sort of more enduring, I think, change in, in the geopolitical environment and the future direction of, of the global economy, which just makes things expensive in financial terms, but also expensive for investors that you have to invest more time in working out what's going on. I think you described it as they're going to be marking your homework a bit more closely. So those rising tides that have lifted all boats are going to be shrinking back. Yes, and I think it's funny, that was a phrase that actually a central banker had used to me that he said he didn't like the way that quantitative easing or the bond purchases had sort of neutered the bond market because they had a feeling that their homework was being marked by the bond market. I think it's the same for all investors that all of those market signals of are you going in the right way, are you a deal that's worth doing, um, have been blunted by this era of cheap money. Of course, you know, as long as you're benefiting from it, it's okay. But I know there's quite a lot of people here who at least in theory say they want to go back to a period where there's a bit more rigour in the market and those market signals are working a bit better. And also you talked about the, the stepping back, the deglobalisation. What do you see as the key impacts of that? Because there are perhaps opportunities in that in terms of, you know, on sourcing and all of those. No, things. exactly. And I think that and that's one thing I highlighted was this speech that the National Security Advisor, Jake Sullivan, had given in the US, which had surprisingly wide impact. It was something that caught people's eye across you know, people that I wouldn't have expected to have paid attention to the speech. And I think it's because it crystallized this thought that you now have a very active industrial policy in the US. Yes, it feels protectionist because they're talking about made in America, um, but it's, a, it's beyond that. It's about sort of actively investing in key sectors and trying to sort of build up that capacity in the States in a way which frankly has not been done in the last 20 or 30 years. The feeling was, companies could be trusted to go and make those things elsewhere and then bring them to US consumers. That's no longer the case. And I think there, there are pots of money, clearly hundreds of billions of dollars available um, for that effort if you're in, if you're in the right sector. Um, but again, it takes a bit more, it's going to take a bit more work to understand where those opportunities are. Talking about sectors and, and, and businesses, some have said that despite the challenging economic environment we're in, the companies that these private equity individuals want to invest in are actually looking more resilient than they have in the past. Would you agree with that? And would you say that businesses have learned from previous experiences like the, you know, the global financial crisis? I think, I mean, certainly when you think of, an, of company business models, it takes quite a while for those to change uh, in a global sense. So if you had a company that was massively dependent on sourcing from China or sourcing from other parts of Asia, that's not going to change overnight. And that's one thing that you hear businesses say to governments all the time, particularly here in Germany, actually, you know, decoupling is just not practical in any kind of realistic time frame because we are so that China has become so embedded in the global manufacturing system. But you're right that, you know, there is when you look around, there's an underlying resilience for companies in response to this very steep increase in the cost of money over the last year. Um, that I think we'll, if we weren't so focused on, you know, what's the next step the Fed's going to do and, and where is the credit crunch going, I think we'd be th we're thinking a bit more about 
you know, how is it that demand is still so strong in these economies and these companies are still there um, managing through this environment? So that's perhaps a positive. And from what you said, it's going to be really important to focus on that supply side stuff. That's what you, that's the trend you're seeing more and more. I think so. I mean, it comes back to this basic point about, you know, we're in, in a world of where money is free, um, your homework's not necessarily being marked and you're not necessarily uh, knowing the difference between something being cheap and something being worth buying. I have, I don't know, I have a teenage daughter who's, you know, going out, discovering the benefits of, you know, clothes shopping in a world of cheap clothes and you know, trying to get that point across to her. You know, I think it's also something um, that investors are going to have to be reminded of that you need to look under the hood and understand is this is this a deal that's worth doing or is it merely cheap? It's the hugest audience we've ever had at this conference. 4,000 people in Berlin who have prioritised being here for those perhaps key insights, crucial meetings. I guess that's something you're not surprised by, that you're seeing this industry having to really come together and think about you know, It's one of those conversations, actually. I mean, the last time I was here was just before COVID or just as COVID was, I think people, some people walked away with COVID from this you know, big meeting. Um, and even at that, at that time, obviously, for many of us who were working from home and were able to work quite easily remotely, the big change was the lack of travel, was the loss of those of the conferences. And I had conversations with my fellow economists about, you know, how does it affect global GDP to have no conferences or have them all go online? Um, and I think we sort of felt that maybe it wasn't something that the world was going to notice too much of all these things. But I, I think the lesson of, of the last few years is there is a real difference. I think we have found there's, there's hybrid uh, events you can have and indeed online events can be very valuable and you can do a very fast turnaround. But these kind of set piece places where people are networking and spending time together, I know we at Bloomberg also see the value of those. But maybe again, even the, the bar is higher. They have to be worth going to. They're not, you know, you don't go just for the sake of them. Well, we're certainly very pleased to have you here in Berlin. Thank you so much for joining us. Always fascinating to hear your insights. Thank, Thank you. you. Good to see you.